Egypt has been known as a place of colossal structures, strange rituals, and technologies so advanced that they continue to astonish. In fact, to this day, there are scores of things in this place that we cannot even begin to explain. Imagine if the real history of Egypt cannot be found written on the walls of its tombs and temples, but on an alien planet far, far away. What if ancient Egypt was the center for alien activity? on the earth. In November 2017, news was breaking around the world announced the discovery of what could be an enormous chamber within the Great Pyramid of Giza. If it can be verified, it would be the first major find inside the pyramid since the 1800s and a possible game changer in understanding both the pyramid and the civilization who built it. The discovery of the void is sensational because it opens up the whole discussion to more questions and to new answers. The void is so massive that the Statue of Liberty would fit inside easily from head to toe and still have room to move around. Isn't that incredible? Every single block in the Great Pyramid is bigger than a car and there are over 2 million of them. Oftentimes we throw around the words awesome or monumental and we don't really think about these words. But when you stand in front of the Great Pyramid, the word awesome is, in fact, an understatement of the grand size and scale. Built from more than 2 million limestone blocks, each weighing thousands of pounds, the pyramid is aligned perfectly to the cardinal points of the compass, north, south, east, and west, suggesting that its builders possessed extraordinary geographical knowledge. According to mainstream Egyptologists, the Great Pyramid was built by the Pharaoh Khufu, who reigned from 2589 to 2566 BC during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom. But this notion is hotly contested and is based entirely on a single and very controversial discovery. In 1837, British explorer Richard Howard Weiss claimed to have found the name of Khufu graffitied onto a stone roof of a chamber inside the pyramid. However, it was later discovered that Weiss had written in his private journal that he found nothing in the chamber that looked like hieroglyphics. Some modern researchers suspect it may have been a forgery by Weiss's team to ensure that his expensive expedition was considered a rousing success. One of the problems with Egyptology is that it is something that started in the late 1800s, and a lot of it is sort of solidified within the university system drilling untested foundation knowledge into young aspiring explorers and researchers in a technique of brainwashing to spread falseness to the masses and it worked in a restricted world until we realized that something was not adding up and in fact a cover-up of fantastic proportions has been in place for ages egyptologists archaeologists and geologists are discovering new things about egypt all the time that completely shakes the foundations of what they thought they knew about the place. We're even finding there are structures much older than what the mainstream Egyptians would say. And the fact is, the Great Pyramid was likely built long, long before the reign of Khufu. There are many who believe the colossal structure is probably more than 10,000 years old and date back to a period predating that of the Great Flood. The main reason this pyramid is the most magnificent of all of them is not because it is huge, but because it is the biggest of them all, the oldest of them all, which means they got this thing built to perfection at the first attempt without any mistakes. This suggests the builders knew exactly what they were doing based on previous experience. But how can this be if this was the first pyramid constructed on the good earth? Wait till you hear this. Is it possible that whatever lies within the newly discovered void in the Great Pyramid will reveal not only incredible truths about ancient Egypt, but about the history of humankind? Could there be clues that reveal that Egypt was once home to an extraterrestrial civilization? The news of a possible fourth chamber within the Great Pyramid has become a source of great controversy inside the archaeological community. They have long held the belief that pyramids were essentially built as burial vaults each possessing no more than three chambers. Archaeologists and Egyptologists claim that they were tombs for the pharaohs, and yet no Egyptian pharaoh was ever found in a pyramid in Egypt. 
We have found the mummies of many Egyptian pharaohs, but they're found in the vaults deep underground at the Valley of the Kings in Luxor, hundreds of miles away from the pyramids. The pyramids have no real explanation of what their purpose was. According to what are referred to as the Pyramid Text, a collection of ancient religious texts that were carved on the walls and sarcophagi of the pyramids at Saqqara more than 4,000 years ago. The god Osiris and his wife Isis came to Earth from the constellation of stars known as Orion's Belt, and it is from them that all human life originates. Osiris was the central god of the Egyptian belief system, and he was a god of fertility and a god of the Earth, and he died and was reborn in his son Horos. So you have the cycle of death and rebirth, and this is part of the Book of the Dead. So the Pharaoh, the king, would die and be resurrected. According to the story, Osiris had an iron throne that was coveted by many who sought to possess its awesome powers. One of these was Osiris' brother, Seth, who murdered Osiris in an effort to obtain the throne. Throughout ancient Egypt, in the temples, we see depictions of the gods on their thrones. These thrones are feathered because they are ascension vehicles. They are vehicles that take them to the stars and back. Could it be very possible that the throne is in the void? When we found this pyramid, there was no mummy. There were no treasures, no nothing, no hieroglyphs, nothing. What if all this that we're looking at is a decoy? Because the walls inside the Great Pyramid contain no hieroglyphs and there is no evidence that the colossal structure was ever used as a tomb or temple there has been increasing speculation to its original purpose. One theory held by numerous scientists and archaeoengineers is that the pyramid and others like it may have been built as one and an enormous network of power plants. Christopher Dunn's theories indicate that some of these pyramids had chemicals mixed in them. And in fact, studies of his working devices have shown that this probably would work. According to Christopher Dunn, the pyramids were actually geomechanical devices. In other words, they were attached to the earth, they were tuned to vibrate with the frequencies of the earth, and they converted the energies of the earth into electromagnetic energy. The best example of this is in the Great Pyramid. It's probably the most precise structure on the planet. According to Christopher Dunn's theory, the process of generating energy began with drawing water from the nearby Nile River to the base of the Great Pyramid. Right in front of the door of the entrance door of the Great Pyramid, there used to be a wall shaft, which was documented in 1857. And so the water would just feed down into a moat around the Great Pyramid and then go down the entrance shaft down under the ground. The water was used in the subterranean chamber. It is a water pump. The water was used to cause a compression wave and cause the pyramid to resonate. So in the queen's chamber, two chemicals were introduced, hydrated zinc through the northern shaft and a dilute hydrochloric acid through the southern shaft. This vessel represents the queen's chamber. When you bring these two liquids together, a chemical reaction occurs and a product of that chemical reaction is hydrogen. The hydrogen vapor then escapes through the chimney and there you have the reaction. Adding credibility to Chris Dunn's remarkable theory is the fact that the traces of both zinc and hydrochloric acid have recently been found in the shafts leading to the so-called Queen's Chamber. But if the pyramid was really designed as a gigantic power plant, how was the power applied? Could the Great Pyramid of Giza have been designed as part of an enormous network of ancient power plants? not 4,000 years ago, but much, much earlier and by a civilization with incredibly advanced knowledge. For centuries, the Great Sphinx had appeared only as a giant head peering out from a mound of deep desert sand. Only after years of excavation was the enormity of the structure once again revealed to the world. According to mainstream archaeologists, the Sphinx dates back to approximately 2,500 BC during the reign of the Pharaoh Khafra. But in recent years, that information has been challenged by new research, which suggests that the Sphinx could be much, much older and probably more than 10,000 years old. Carved in rock and located between the paws of the Sphinx is an ancient inscription known as the Dream Stela. 
The Stila writing tells us about a time when the gods still mingled with human beings. The ancient Egyptians were very clear in this. Another part of the inscription in which the Sphinx tells Thotmose that once dug out from the sand, the earth and everything illuminated by the flashing eye of the Lord of all would be his. Now the amazing thing about this is that we are learning of what's called the flashing eye of the Lord. What is the flashing eye of the Lord? This sounds like some kind of technology that is in communication with the Sphinx or perhaps challenged by the Sphinx that could ensure the prosperity of Thotmose IV. The Sphinx is credited with ensuring the prosperity of Thotmose's dynastic family that would later include the Pharaoh Akhenaten. During his reign, Akhenaten decreed that Egypt would no longer worship a number of gods, but just the one god Aten, who was depicted as a golden disc in the sky. Akhenaten was said to become enthralled with the sun disc and this eye of the Lord. Is it possible that the eye of the Lord and the Aten disc are one and the same, and that they are, in fact, some kind of UFO spaceship that's hovering over Egypt as an eye in the sky and is guiding Egyptian civilization? There is literally no technology out there, not even carbon dating, that can actually tell us how old exactly the Sphinx is. Mainstream Egyptology and mainstream archaeology claim that the Sphinx was sculpted the same time the Second Pyramid was, but this is all guesswork. All the knowledge we have is still a guess. We're off by tens of thousands of years. A couple of Egyptologists in the early 20th century saw that there were weathering patterns on the Sphinx that seemed not to fit the weathering patterns of other structures of the Giza Plateau. This means there is incredible discrepancies between what we see on the Sphinx and other structures on the Giza Plateau. If the Sphinx was built in 2500 BC, there would not be the amount of water erosion on the Sphinx that we can see. So either the climate of Egypt was drastically different than what we think of it in 2500 BC, or the Sphinx is at least 10,000 or 12,000 years old. The head of the Sphinx seems to be a bit too small for the actual body, and so it has been speculated that the head of the Sphinx was actually something else originally, and then was recarved to be the head that it is today. Some archaeologists do think the original head of the Sphinx was the jackal head of Anubis. One of the most ancient of the Egyptian gods dating back to the time of Isis and Osiris, but if this is true, why was the colossal statue changed, and when? Perhaps the answer lies like most of Egypt's secrets, buried deep beneath the desert sands in an area located approximately 300 feet north of the Sphinx. Relatively unexplored, it is an area where some archaeologists and researchers believe lies yet another Sphinx, still deeply buried, and still bearing the head of the god Anubis. If the ancient Egyptians didn't build the Sphinx, who did and why? Could it have been used by a civilization far advanced? from the one later depicted on the walls of Egypt's tombs and temples, a civilization whose origins were, as numerous ancient Egyptian texts suggest, not of this world. Edgar Cayce had a profound vision while in a self-induced trance. He sees himself as a high priest in ancient Egypt, a priest who was directly associated with the building of the Sphinx. According to Cayce's vision, this occurred not in 2500 BC, but 8,000 years earlier. One of the greatest sources for information on the older civilization of Egypt is Edgar Cayce. He is known as the Sleeping Prophet, an American psychic of great repute and note. He refers on one occasion to the date of 10,390 BC, when he tells us not only was this a time that the Great Sphinx of Giza was created, but also tells us that the records of some previous civilization that had existed on Atlantis were buried within this. According to the great philosopher Plato, who wrote about it in the 4th century BC, Atlantis was an island in the Atlantic that was home to a highly advanced civilization, but was wiped out by a great flood. In his vision, Edgar Cayce believed he saw under the right paw of the Sphinx a chamber that holds a hall of records from the lost civilization of Atlantis. 
He said there was a repository of high-tech devices and machines that have been left there for thousands of years for people to discover during our time period on Earth, our civilization, that we would discover these ancient high-tech artifacts in chambers beneath the Sphinx. Based on Plato's writings, Atlantis would have existed approximately 12,000 years ago. This matches up with the time period with the Giza pyramids and the Sphinx were aligned with the constellation of both Orion and Leo. Some researchers also suggest this was the same error that was described in ancient writings as Egypt's so-called Golden Age or Zep Tepi, a time in Egyptian history when the god Osiris had come down to earth from the stars. There are accounts from the walls of different temples that tell of an earlier age of activity and it was said that this was when the gods themselves actually enter into Egypt and create everything that becomes a part of the later Egyptian civilization. They created the first enclosure, the first temple, and various other strange structures, which suggest some from a high technology and suggest that an advanced culture existed and thrived there, although there are many who dismissed Edgar Cayce's incredible vision as a mere hallucination. What Casey envisioned was indeed discovered, one behind the head of the Sphinx and another directly below. But mainstream Egyptologists continue to insist these tunnels were made long after the Sphinx was constructed. The ancient necropolis located 15 miles south of the Giza Plateau is home to what mainstream archaeologists suggest is the first pyramid ever built in Egypt, the Step Pyramid of King Djoser. The Step Pyramid of Saqqara is known as the Stairway to Heaven. The complex is vast, about 40 acres, and entirely walled in. There is a 30-foot wall with 13 false doors. You only get in if you know where the right door is. Curiously, the only reason why the pyramid is believed to have been built as a tomb for King Djoser is that the statues of the monarch were found inside the pyramid. Like all other pyramids, there was no credible evidence that a body was ever entombed there. This was all made of mud brick, just similar to that era. The leap between this and then the Great Pyramid of Giza is sensational. In recent years, the conventional notion that the Step Pyramid was built only 80 years earlier than the Great Pyramid of Giza has been challenged. They believe that the likelihood that Egyptians went from building a 200 foot tall Step Pyramid out of mud bricks to building a monumental marvel like the Great Pyramid in only 80 years to be a virtual absurdity. They also believe that the mathematical precision of the Great Pyramid's construction coupled with its precise alignment not only with regard to Earth's cardinal direction but also the Orion constellation is proof that it was built by a highly advanced civilization. One of the things you find, for example, is that if you take the geodetic location of the Great Pyramid as a decimal degree, the Great Pyramid was most likely built more than 12,000 years ago, some 7,000 years before the building of the Step Pyramid, and sometime before the cataclysmic event known as the Great Flood. After the Flood, the original function of the Great Pyramid as a power plant was long forgotten, along with all of mankind's other technological achievements and that it would take a series of interventions by other extraterrestrial visitors to help humans rebuild the world they once knew. In the text that we can read about Djoser, a brilliant man named Inhotep is credited, who, by the way, came out of nowhere. He was the designer and engineer of that pyramid. What does Inhotep actually mean? Get this, it literally means, I come in peace. He showed up into the life of the king out of nowhere and then ascended into position so quickly, which is more than enough to raise an eyebrow or two, especially by ancient Egyptian standards. In Egyptian history, you can normally trace every position back to their parents, but Inhotep does not seem to have any family history. There is no trace of this mysterious man. Apparently just a common person, but a brilliant thinker who grew to great influence during the time of the pharaohs that he served and then became virtually immortalized for all time. That is pretty significant. It is as if he became a cult figure during this time period, but why? 
Some have suspected that he was Joseph from the Bible because Joseph is described as an advisor to a pharaoh in about the same period of time. Imhotep rose to the incredible status as the wizard to the pharaoh. There are great mysteries about who Imhotep was, where he came from, and one of the extraordinary texts tells us that his knowledge did in fact come from the stars. In ancient Egyptian history, Inhotep spoke like a true ancient Egyptian and everything he has came from the gods. It is said he was buried in the necropolis of Saqqara, but his tomb is yet to be found. But this necropolis and the surrounding desert is simply enormous. If this tomb is to be discovered, then it will be no doubt the discovery of the century. But will it provide further evidence that ancient Egyptian legends of gods descending to earth from the constellation of Orion are based on fact. Egyptian historian Al Margrizi has begun work on a series of writings that propose that the history of the Giza Plateau dates back much further than what is accepted by most people of today. He has concluded that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx were not constructed in 2500 BC, but thousands of years earlier by a king named Saurid. And they say Saurid is the same which the Hebrews call Enoch. Now, Arabian notation says Enoch plus Methuselah constructed the Great Pyramid. The same Enoch who was written about in one of the so-called lost chapters of the Bible, who supposedly was taken up to heaven by angels, called watchers in order for him to observe the human race. Could he really have been the same person who was responsible for the building of the Great Pyramid more than 12,000 years ago? The Book of Enoch is a text that is believed to have been written by the Essenes, Jewish mystics, sometime between the 3rd and 2nd century BC. In the story, they tell how one of the Watcher angels, the Archangel Michael, came to Earth and took Enoch into the heavenly realms, to the throne of God, where Enoch is educated by the angels and given an opportunity to return to Earth to share the accumulated knowledge that he received. It's very similar to what we see in the Pyramid text, where the Pharaoh is taken into the stellar realms, where his body becomes like lightning, where the doors of heaven are opened, and where a human then can be educated by the gods. According to the Book of Enoch, the Watchers were sent by God in order to help mankind on Earth. But after a number of these Watchers had sex with human women and produced children in the form of giant mutants known as the Nephilim, God caused a great flood that was intended to destroy them, along with all those who disobeyed his will. Our main knowledge of the Nephilim comes not just from the Bible, but also from the Book of Enoch, and also the so-called Book of Giants. The Book of Giants says that they were destroyed in a cataclysm that not only involved a deluge, but also fire that came out of the sky. And we can connect this story with what we call the Younger Dryas Comet impact event that took place around 10,800 BC that is known to have had a massive effect upon the Northern Hemisphere at this time. If the foundations of ancient Biblical and Egyptian texts are not based on mere imagination but on actual historical events, then it serves to strengthen their contention that the roots of ancient Egypt stretch back far earlier than currently believed by mainstream scholars and archaeologists. While on an expedition to recover ancient manuscripts for the Louvre Museum in Paris, French archaeologist Auguste Mariette spots a strange object sticking out of the sand. Intrigued, Mariette has the sand cleared away and finds large rocks blocking what looks to be the entrance to an underground chamber. After using explosives to remove them, he gains entrance to a tomb complex also known as the Serapium. Located deep beneath the desert surface lies a 700 foot long passageway. There, located in a series of alcoves neatly carved out of the limestone rock are 24 gigantic stone sarcophagi perfectly constructed from solid granite and each weighing roughly 100 tons, the equivalent of 55 mid-sized automobiles. The boxes themselves are 80 tons and then the lids are estimated to be 25 tons. One of the most mysterious things about this place is really how they managed to bring these heavy structures all the way down when breathing is intense today with the aid of pumped airflow. Each sarcophagus measures 13 feet, 7.5 feet wide and over 10 feet tall. But just how the ancient Egyptians managed to transport these massive granite boxes 
remains unknown, as does their original intended purpose. It shouldn't be beyond our comprehension to understand these ancient places, but the fact is that we can't come up with a logical answer without incorporating ancient Egyptian history from the Golden Period and earlier to be actual records of actual historical events. We have so much left to rediscover in a world that is still recovering from the ancient cataclysm. What do you guys think of this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.